had the idea for Caraval about a year and a half before I started writing it. Um, who here has read the book Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine? Okay, I have a couple people, yes. It's historical fiction, and it's nothing like Caraval, um, although it has a very strong female friendship, which you know could be equated to like the sister relationship in Caraval. Um, but I was reading that book, and one of the characters, it takes place during World War II, and one of the characters is a female pilot, and she ferries people about Europe, and she goes, Whoa. <laughs> um, oh, no. Hello? Did I? Okay, it's working. Um, and, oh, okay. Sorry. If it goes out, I'll just keep going. And if someone can't hear me, feel free to just raise a hand and I'll talk louder. So she picks up three dudes and it's one man who's being guarded by two others. And she at first has no idea if he's being guarded because he's really important to the war, he's maybe royalty or something that needs to be protected, or if he's really deadly and dangerous and they need to make sure he doesn't escape. So it's only like one paragraph, maybe a page. It has nothing to do with the rest of the story. The question is never answered in the book. And I kind of became obsessed with it because I, I thought it was such a good question because either answer could be true and I wanted to know which one was true. And so from there, I started to have this idea about a game. And at first it started out, my main character was like a girl who worked in a tavern and she knew that like, you know, this, this troupe of performers was coming to town and um, then, you know, a guy comes in and he tells her like he needs her help and then other people tell her like, no, he's a murderer. And, I don't know. So, but just the idea of it started with the idea of you know a game, and you don't know who's a performer, and you don't know who's lying and who's telling the truth, and what's real and what's a game. And and I like the idea of rather than like just a quest for something, even though I love quests, of making it about like who do you trust. So that that's where the idea for it originally started. I thought that was really surprising. Was it, or was it like you just said something like oh the Night Circus? Uh, <laughs> I actually hadn't read the Night Circus. Um, before I started writing it until like part way through. So it was like, this sounds a little like the Night Circus. You should check it out. Oh, I was so supporting you. I haven't asked them right then. <laughs> it's on my to read list though. It's a good book. It's it a is, really good book. I have heard many, many good things. And one of the things that I managed to pick up on one of your interviews actually, because I did my research like a good person, <laughs> <laughs> is um, that a lot of people said, well, they wouldn't take on Caraval because they said that it was almost too circusy and circus books were dead in the water. I mean. I think well, you've proved them entirely wrong. Yes, well, it was actually, um, it was before I even, like, I submitted it. So it wasn't, um, once it was submitted, people were really responsive. But as I was writing it, um, friends had warned me that, and then I had applied for a critique. So before it even went out to editors, I'm a member of the Society for Children's Book Writers and, and Illustrators, which is an international organization. Stupid. Yes, a crazy difficult acronym to remember. <laughs> um, but if you go to conferences, you can pay to get your work critiqued. And since I was like, all right, I want to do everything I can for this book, I sent, you know, in the first um, 10 pages along with my query letter, and the editor was kindly, you know, like, uh, the content is too mature, the themes are too mature, I don't like your letters, the circus books are overdone. So she was the one, and she, you know, wrote me like a long letter with it, and it was shortly, you know, about two months before it, like, we went out with actual editors who had a very different response, but, you know, before we submitted it, a lot of people were like, mm. Yeah, I want to say it's very surprising. If they'd have given it a chance, I'm sure they'd be kicking themselves at the moment. <laughs> if you could bring uh, one thing from Caraval into the real world, what would you pick and why? Ooh, nobody, nobody's asked me that question. That is a good question. All right, let me think. Let me think back to the magical things in Caraval. Okay, so there's a tent, um, and it's covered in bottles, and all the bottles have magic potions inside, and they have different potions, so I would probably go in there and take something, um, and because I'm one of those terrible people who, you know, I read the last page of a book before I finish it, I cannot help myself, um, I'd probably want, like, a potion that would allow me to see the future, and then I'd probably regret it, but I would still do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in Caraval, um, as you mentioned, there are a number of players, you've got spectators, as well as the performers, um, each have their own very distinctive personalities and the motives, but um, were any of them based off people you know? 
No, they weren't. They weren't. Um, yeah, yeah. They so I, many people. If you think that that was hard to not. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way I write characters um, is I always come up with. I, I give my characters index cards. I'm obsessed with index cards. If you were to go to my house right now, I'd be really embarrassed because my kitchen table is covered. I write at my kitchen table. It's covered in index cards and post-it notes, and you know they just like show up everywhere. And um, so the thing I start with for every character is I start with a want. So it's like what they want the most. And for the characters in Caraval, I gave them each multiple wants because I didn't, I didn't know who to trust. Even as I wrote, I didn't let myself know who was telling the truth and who was lying. So I had these index cards and each character would have like, if they're telling the truth, this is what they want. If they're lying, this is what they want. If there's an option C, this is what they want. So I based all my characters, like I built them around their wants and then I gave them each a secret. So they each had a secret, and so I built their characters around those things. So rather than basing them on people I knew, it was just those facts, and yeah. It was really in-depth. Because I know what it was so good. Um, if you had to pick a favorite out of a lot of them, who would you pick and why? Oh, legend, for <laughs> sure. Oh my gosh. So um, for those of you who haven't read the book, it starts with Scarlet writing letters to Caravel Master Legend. And he runs all of Carabao. He's also the first character I came up with. And so um, who's read the Marie Lou book Legend? Anybody? Okay, yay, some hands went up. Um, it's a great book. And when I first picked it up, I'd never heard a friend of mine was just like, this is a good book, you should get it. So I bought it. And I just naturally assumed that it was about a character named Legend. And um, it, it is a great book, but it is not about a character named Legend. So I was very disappointed. Um, and I kept wanting to read about a character named Legend um, until one day I was listening to the Fall Out Boy song, Centuries. Anyone hear that song? Okay, yeah. If you go back and you listen to the lyrics, it's very, like, fitting of a legend. And I was like, this is a good song. And then I was like, oh, what if I just wrote about a character named Legend? That wasn't anyone else's idea. I just thought it was. So um, I put the song on repeat, and I just started writing about legend and I was like who is this guy that goes by legend you know and he thinks he's awesome and well everybody else kind of thinks he's awesome too and so I just became obsessed with him um, and even writing the books um, he's tricked me a few times so like yeah I just love I just love legend I did absolutely love the way that you were with him it was just like it's parts of him seemed like really mysterious and really dangerous but then also vulnerable and really like anxious as well and I was just like oh Poor baby, I want to hug him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, if you were sent an invite to Caraval, would you be a player or a spectator? Ooh, you know, I go back and forth with that one because I'm, I'm actually, um, even though my characters aren't based on anyone, there are some similarities to me and Scarlet, being that like I'm totally overprotective sister um, to an obnoxious degree, and you know, I'm a rule follower. I like to use crosswalks when I cross the street to you know, the annoyance of everyone else around me, but you know, I just do, I feel better. I color inside the lines. Um, so I think I'd be very scared, but I think I would have to be a player. I think I would have to like participate in it because it's a once in a lifetime and, and I do get a little competitive. So if there was a prize I wanted, um, I would probably go for it, but I'd probably like freak out and totally like not do well. I would need someone like very stable to do it with me because I'd be like <laughs> freaking out all the time. Obviously you got to make sure you can trust them. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but um, if you did manage to win Caraval, what wish would you wish? Uh, okay, so that might be a big one. <laughs> as much as I love Legend, I don't really trust him and I've read enough fantasy novels to not trust wishes, so I don't think I would use it. I would like want to hold on to it because I'm afraid anything I wish for, you know, would go like horribly awry. It's like you'd get what you wanted, but there'd be disastrous consequences. Um, and I just like am prone to disaster. So yeah, I would hold on to the wish, maybe like sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you find the most rewarding part about writing fantasy? Oh my gosh. Um, I love writing. I really, really love writing. Part of the reason I wanted to be, sorry, every time I hear that, I'm like, ooh. Um, <laughs> part of the reason I wanted to get published is because it was, at first it was a hobby, and then I was just spending 
so much time writing that I was like, I can't justify all this time. I was like, oh, but if it was my job, <laughs> then I could write all the time and I would never feel guilty. You know, it'd be okay to like spend eight, 10 hours a day in front of my computer with my imaginary friends. Um, and so I, I love writing and I love, I actually really like the revision. Um, Drafting is really hard for me. I'm you know, like what I was saying about like, I give my characters all these possible avenues when I, when I draft. Um, I will write out scenes like 40 different ways sometimes, you know, so in the beginning of the book it's about two sisters, but I tried out early chapters where it was about a sister and her brother, a sister and her best friend, and some versions that was a guy and some it was a girl, and it was like, you know, different settings, different things, so once I get the draft down and I have the bones of the story, I really love going in and, you know, getting to the heart of it and developing those things. Um, and I really like surprises. I love like, you know, killing off characters unexpectedly. I just have so much fun randomly doing that. I'm so evil. <laughs> Only when I'm writing. <laughs> like writing's like the one area also where it's like, okay, you know, I really do color in the lines. I like baking as opposed to cooking because you follow recipes, but writing it's just like, whoo, I'm out of control with everything. <laughs> That's the best way to be. <laughs> um, so, a um, little known fact that people might not know. Um, you actually wrote five books before Caraval. Um, how was writing this one different to the others? Ooh, um, so, the first books I wrote, um, I was very inspired to start. I'd always wanted to write. I really had, but then I'd be afraid to pursue it because um, the author I was speaking with last night, James Bryce, he did a really good job talking about it, how it's just like this, you know, it's like reaching for a star. It's like an impossible, you know, unrealistic dream. And that's how I felt. And so I was afraid to pursue it. Um, and then I read Twilight and I <laughs> fell in love with Edward Cullen. And then I fell in love with reading books and I devoured everything. And then I just wanted to start writing. So when I first started writing, I had not taken any courses. I had not read any books on craft. I didn't have any friends that were authors or writers. I was just pretty much in my apartment on the floor where no one could see me, like, typing out my fantasy <laughs> novels. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I had a blast. And they were just completely, you know, I, I got some friends to read them. And now I'm very embarrassed. Um, and so with Caravel by then, it was like I'd written five books. And I, I knew a little more. I knew more about publishing. And so it was like, you know that saying, like, you need to learn the rules so that you can break them? I felt with care about, I'd learned all the rules, but then I got to the point where I was like, OK, this is, dude, I'm done. <laughs> if this book doesn't sell, I can't write another one. Like, my little heart can't take it. And I think my family all thinks I'm insane because um, I keep writing these books no one wants to read. And so with care about, I was like, I learned as much as I could, and I'd done everything I could. and But then I was also like, but I'm going to write the book I want to write. I'm not going to think about publishing. So when I first started writing, I didn't know anything. And then I got to know more, and I was thinking more about, like, this is going to sell. This is high concept. This is different. This is fresh. I thought way more highly of something than I should. And then with Caravelle, it was just like, this is the book I want to read. This is the story that I want to get lost inside and the world I want to visit. And, you know, like, I want to fall in love with all of this. So it was... I wrote it more, I think, for me than anybody else, but by that time I also <laughs> learned enough so that it wasn't like, you know, total rubbish. Well, I think you can definitely read your passion for the book when you read it, because I think like what you just said there, I think, you know, well, speaking for myself, but I know that there are a few in the audience who would definitely feel the same, that they just got swallowed up in the world, and I think pretty much all of us want to live there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with the um, other books, would you be looking to maybe revisit some of them in the future? You know, I don't think I would. Um, I wrote a space opera, and I would maybe want to revisit the cannibal planet that I created. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really sci-fi cool... Lord of the Flies. Yes, it was a really cool cannibal planet. The sun changed colors, and whenever it turned red, people turned into cannibals, but they were kind of like zombie cannibals, and everybody lived in trees, and, you know, there were these tree huts, and it was just all red and eerie and space pirates running around. <laughs> that actually sounds amazing. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I thought about a short story. I don't know what the story would be, but I'm like, I liked that planet. It was like so horrific. <laughs> it's like Stephen King in space. <laughs> Do you have any um, tips for aspiring writers? Ooh, okay, how many of you guys are writers? Yay! Um, so my big tip would be what I said is to write the book you want to read. 
And that's what I'm, I'm, what I'm always telling my <laughs> students, because um, I think there's a difference between writing what you want to write, because sometimes, I mean, and I've done it before, I'll put things on paper that nobody wants to read, but it just feels really good to write, you know, as a way to, like, get out your emotions, or, you know, I get carried away sometimes with, like, my words and metaphors, and I'll just, you know, Carabelle's pretty descriptive, but some of my descriptions, it's like, whoa, and it feels good to write, but um, writing the book you want to read, I think that's the best advice. Um, also, I think, um, I'm trying to think, because I feel like writing is two parts. I feel like one part is just, like, your soul and your spirit and who you are and having, like, that right headspace and having, like, the right amount of, like, confidence and support and feeling inspired. And then the other part is really studying and learning craft. So I think, like, you want to learn as much as you can and read books on craft and, I was really terrified of going to conferences and meeting other people at first. Like, I still can remember the first time I went to, like, a writer's workshop, and I was, I was like, sweating the whole three-and-a-half-hour car right there, and I, like, ate a whole bunch of chocolate and drank a whole bunch of wine that weekend, and I was just like, ah. But, um, so learning as much as you can, and then also finding really good friends to support you. Um, I think it's really important and really helpful to connect with other writers who are in the same place as you. So whenever, one, it took me a while to make other friends, but once I did, um, when I was querying, it was great to have people who were also, you know, being rejected or getting, getting let, you know, getting requests because then it was like, yay, it happened to you. You got a request, you got an agent, I can too, you know? It was inspiring to like have those people you're going through with it and also just learning from people. So I think it's really important to have that group of friends. Um, I'm really close. I'm friends with, most of my friends are writers, and a lot of my friends are published authors, and it's not just because it's like, oh, all authors know each other, it's because it's like, I met you, like, six years ago when I first started write, making writing friends, um, and we, you know, we're all unpublished, and then we've all stuck to it, so it's, I think those friends, you know, are just invaluable. So the writing is a very lonely world if you don't get your friends to yeah. support you, it's, Definitely something that you need to look into. Oh, I have one more piece of advice. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, there's also really, I, I think writing coffin tests are really awesome too. Um, there's one called Pitch Wars. I think it still goes on. Brenda Drake. Okay, yeah, it still goes on. I see the nods. Um, I did that contest. I It didn't help me get an agent, but I did learn a lot through it and I made a lot of friends. And I'll, I know there are published novels that have resulted as because of that contest, but I feel like Writing contests like that can be so good, and I, I learned a lot from doing them, so I'm all for them. Also, I'll add on to that. I think Curtis Brown um, is a UK publisher. Sometimes um, at certain, I think it's one week per month, they do an elevator pitch, and they'll get two different agents to basically take over their Twitter for the day, and you can pitch your book to them in 144 characters, and then they'll give you advice on if they like it or if it gets their attention. Curtis Brown is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right, I've got um, Caravan. It's planned to be a duology. Did I get that wrong? There's a second book coming sometime next year. Yay! So Caravan obviously was such an amazing <laughs> book. Um, it gave us a lot more questions than answers, though. Um, can we expect to see those questions answered in the sequel? All I can say about the sequel is it comes out next year and it's from a different character's perspective. I was coached on what to say because I would probably give away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not going to keep you my own secret, so just know I wish I could say more, but <laughs> I won't push it. <laughs> so um, lastly, before we go to our audience Q&A, um, I'd like to ask, what would you wear to Caravan? <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh gosh. You know, there is one dress that Scarlett wears that I love. It's like this white gown with like this red wine bow that's huge but I don't do well with white because I'm the klutziest person alive um, I, so I would maybe like I would steal Scarlett's magic dress I would borrow it I'm not I'm not a thief but Scarlett has a magic dress that has a mind of its own and it changes depending on um depending on various factors and I think it'd be really fun to wear that but definitely the one that I'd steal as well yes good choice <laughs> So, um, and has anybody got any questions for Stephanie? Hi. Hi. Um, I've written a novel, but I'm not getting very far with agents. Like, none of them have requested anything back. And I just want to ask what your advice would be if you're dealing with that. Yeah, good. Okay, first, yay! Congratulations on writing a novel, and congratulations on querying. 
I know so many people um, who say they want to write the novel and don't finish, and then I've had a lot of friends who finish the novel and then they're too afraid to query, so um, yay. And my first, um, the first book I wrote, I think I queried 100 to 200 people and I didn't get a single request. Um, so I think it could be three different things. Um, one, it could just be you're not, you haven't found the right agents yet. Um, two, your query might need some more work. Um, when I did the query for Qu Caravel, which was like my highest request rate, um, I revised it about a hundred times to the point, you know, past the point when I thought, hey, this is good enough. Like once I thought, hey, it was good enough, then I did some more work on it. Um, it could also be your opening pages. So sometimes people um, will really look at like their query letter, but not their opening pages. And so um, your opening pages, your story. And when I teach creative writing, the most common thing I see with my students is that their story's not starting in the right place. So a lot of times I'll be like, okay, um, usually more often than not, it needs to start at a later point. So sometimes I'll read, because um, the classes I teach are writing for publication and we like obsessively talk about first chapters <laughs> until I think my students hate me. Um, but a lot of times what I've noticed, like the big trend is that it's like, okay, you should start here. So it's like, you know, it might be like three, five pages in because it's like they're setting everything up and it's like, you don't need all this backstory right away. Um, so, but if you if you think it could be the query query shark, yeah. is a really good resource. Um, so those are those are some of the tips I have. Um, yeah, but I am I am sorry that you haven't gotten any traction yet. But don't be discouraged at all because sometimes and sometimes it's just the market. Sometimes people are slow, but hopefully that helps. Thank you. Don't give up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, my greatest desire was really like to publish. Like that was, I really, really, this was my dream. You know, it's all been my dream come true. So um, my biggest fear, <coughs> gosh, that's such a tough like personal question. Um, mm, you know, honestly, if something were to happen to my family, you know, I, um, when I've got good news, like the first, the first people I call are usually my mom or my dad. Um, and recently I got some really good news and I started crying when I called my dad, um, just because he was still there. My dad's a little older and he's had some health issues. And so I just started crying that I could share it with him. So like my, my biggest fear is honestly, you know, there's, you know, where I'm like Scarlet again is if anything were to happen to my family, like I'm, I'm pretty, I can be pretty passive, but I'm fierce when it comes to them. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I do relate so much to the many post-its on the table and the, and the cards. I do that compulsively. And and I have so many characters with like endless sheets of paper. And, and I think I've gotten to the point where I've developed the characters for, for what I'm writing right now. But I can't seem to find a proper plot line. And no matter in how many directions I take them, it just doesn't end up where it should. And do, you, do you ever have that? And if so, how do you keep your characters who they're supposed to be and still... That's a good question. Um, so the way I write, and I don't know that I even recommend this because I'm like, oh gosh, don't write like me. I'm a disaster. Um, but I'll come up with my world. And so for like I was saying with Caravelle, I spent about two to three months writing those first two chapters, figuring out who Scarlett and Tella and the father were, what, what they wanted and what was in their way. Um, and then once I knew that, I just wrote the rest really fast. So I think sometimes it can be, you might know too much. Um, when you really just want, like, who is your character? What do they want more than anything? What happens if they don't get it? So that's, like, where, you know, that can be the tricky thing. What happens if they don't get it? And then what is in their way? And then the other thing is who helps them along? So if you maybe just stick to the simplest thing, um, then go with that. Or, but also, I recently, like, okay, so confession. Um, I finished my first draft of book two. And I kind of did that. It had, and I told my editor when she called me, I was like, okay, I know it's a mess. It has five different plots, and I need to decide which one to take. And she was like, yes, you nailed it. Um, because I just couldn't. I put it all on the page. So if you're doing it, I would just suggest you almost, you just keep going, 
and then go back. So a lot of times, like, ugh, I think plot's overrated. I think even Stephen King on writing, he talks about, like, the uselessness of plot. I think plot is just kind of just string it together. So sometimes you just need to get it all out, and then you can go back and see, like, what is the most compelling thread and focus everything on that. And then, so you cut the rest, just let go of the rest and find that most compelling thread. So even though I wrote this book and it was a disaster, it was helpful because I was able to see like, okay, what are the best parts? What do I really want to focus on? You know, what is my editor interested in? What do we think readers are really going to connect with? And so it was like, because I had all these choices and then I just picked the one that I thought would be the most interesting. So even if you're like that, my advice would just be finish the book, you know, just finish it. And then give yourself the freedom to like even change your characters. When I first started writing Scarlet, for those of you who've read the book, will know that she's not like larger than life, fearless, adventurous kind of person. Like that's what I thought she was going to be, and she's not. You know, the more I got to know her situation, especially, I realized this girl would not feel like that. This this is not how she would be inside. And so, um, you know, give yourself the freedom too to like you know change your characters around a little. But I hope that helps. Yeah, those. Good. So one, I would say one thing that I'd add with that is just remember that your first draft, it's for you. It's for you to explore your characters. Like, they don't have to... Well, they will misbehave. That's one thing that I'll add. So just explore them. Yeah, and if you feel free... You know, like, I had plans for Caravel. It totally didn't work out. And I'm glad I let them go. I think readers would have been mad if I'd done some of the things I'd planned. <laughs> <laughs> um, if your book was picked up for a movie, and I'm not sure if it already has been or not, um, who would you like to see casted as Scarlett, Julian, and Tella? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, so um, 20th Century Fox, they have the movie option, um, which is really exciting. And I, and, I, and I say this with the preface, like, I don't think I get any say in casting, so, uh, but um, they, they do like hearing what readers have to say. I know they really care about what readers have to say because we've had conversations. So they read they read the reviews and stuff that you guys write. So it matters to them. I'm just saying it really does. It makes a difference. Um, so feel free to make your suggestions. But um, so I've thought about it a lot and I haven't found Julian. I really haven't. Um, if anyone has a good Julian suggestion, please send it my way because I'm like been looking um, and I haven't found one. But I would love... Um, I would love for Scarlett to be played by Lily Jane. I think she's really awesome. And then um, who's seen The 100? Okay. And then the girl, okay, who plays Octavia? Her name's like, is it Marie Avergopoulos? Okay, yeah. So I'm like, last name that I can't pronounce. I think she would be an awesome Donatella. Um, and then I think, and I'm like, I don't know if this would be like weird because he plays her brother on the show, but I think... Bob Morley, who plays Bellamy Blake on The 100, would be a really awesome Dante. Um, I know that doesn't answer your question, but that, since I didn't have Julian, I'm like, okay, I'll put that one in there. So yeah, but yeah, if anyone has Julian suggestions, please send them my way because I've been looking. Not that I get a say in casting, so. <laughs> but maybe, who knows, they, may get, they could ask me in my dream world. <laughs> um, what was the easiest and what was the hardest part to write of Caraval? <gasps> Ooh, yeah, okay. Um, so the easiest part was chapter five, which was edited a lot from the original version with Legend's backstory. That was when, that was one of the earliest things that I wrote that actually stuck. I'd written things before that that did not stay in the book, thankfully. Um, but I loved, I loved writing Legend's backstory. And um, the other day someone was like, oh, was there anything that was cut that you missed? And I'm like, no, everything that was cut was total trash. Except um, after thinking about it, I was like, no, there are parts in that that I really liked. Because I, lo I just love, I'm clearly obsessed with Legend. I have a problem. Um, so I loved writing that. But then what I really struggled with, and it was really hard for me. So I'm not a plotter. I don't plot it out ahead of time. You know, I just try to let my characters have fun and see where they go. And so I also told myself as I was writing this book, I was like, okay, the big thing when you enter Caraval is you're told to remember it's all a game. Everything that happens is just a game. And so the question is, like, what's real and what's a game? And so I told myself, all right, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna answer that question. I'm just gonna play along and then figure it out at the last possible moment. So I didn't know what was real and what was a game as I was writing until like three quarters of the way into the book. And it was really hard because I was like trying to keep it all straight and trying, you know, like to see what happened. So it was really hard for me to like figure out 
um, what was real and what was a game, and um, that was, so I remember, but it also motivated me to keep writing, because I was like, okay, I have to get to the end of this book, because I need to know who's telling the truth and what's real. Um, so that, it was also fun, but I was also like, oh my gosh, I'm driving myself mad. <laughs> you know, uh, the second book, is that going to be from Taylor's perspective? I can't answer that question. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to. I told someone there'd be no spoilers. Sorry, sorry. I told someone there wouldn't be any spoilers. <laughs> About those things that you had to exclude, and you're happy you excluded. Is there anything you can tell us that you think you're really glad is not in there, and without spoiling anything of the book? Or is there something that was so ridiculous you can? Well, it wasn't ridiculous so much as, um, and here's like writing advice type thing. It's my agent was like, "This is boring." <laughs> um, so there was a conversation that two characters had at a bar, and they're just sitting there at the bar talking. And my agent was like, uh, "Yeah, can you have them do something else? Can you have someone maybe chasing them? Can you have something more exciting going on? Anything?" <laughs> so like the conversation is good, but this scene is just boring. So that it was that kind of stuff where it's like, okay, these things need to happen, but at, bring in more magic, make this more exciting, make this work, make the setting more interesting. So um, yeah, they were like ridiculous. If anything, they were the opposite. It was just like uh, nobody wants to see them just sitting here talking. You know, you keep referring to book two. Yes. Is there likely to be a book three? <gasps> That's a good question. I don't know yet. <laughs> I, and I really don't, because if I did, I know I'd give it away. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I wish I knew. I would love to. I'd love to keep writing more. I would. I really would. So I think um, it depends on readers. And then also, like, my editor is very much like, I don't want to turn a series into a trilogy unless there's a real reason for it. So, which is good, because it's like, I don't want to be one of those writers who it's like, okay, this book was just here to make another book. So, but I, I would, I would love, to, I'd love to keep writing more. And I like the world. I like it. I think it's fun. I think it'd definitely be good if you did like a short story or a novella to just do legend. <gasps> actually, got an, an actual point. <laughs> <laughs> um, once you've finished the story with Caraval, as you've already created a world, would you want to write in that world again? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a lot of ideas and a lot of different things, especially, you know, with the draft I wrote that I got rid of so much. I got rid of a ton of stuff. Um, so I have like all this material that's just like, ooh, other stories. So I'd love to. I, I could see myself like I'm not tired of the world at all, um, you know, playing in it as long as other people want to like hang out there too. Um, outside of the Caraval world, have you got any other plans to write any other books for? Um, right now I've just been focusing on book two so like occasionally I'll get like little flickers of an idea but it's more I think when I'm just like really struggling and I'm like oh it'd be so much better to write this book um, but I just have like like very loose ideas so I've been but I've been really entrenched in book two but I mean I love writing fantasy and books and so you know I do have one idea that I, I probably wouldn't ever apply but I think it'd be really fun to write yeah Um, oh, that's a good question. So it's kind of both, I realized. So when I wrote it, um, the fifth book I'd written was a space opera, and it took place on a very stark, white, boring spaceship. And afterwards, I was like, well, why did I create that setting? And I realized, I was like, okay, next book, I'm going to make it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create it in the place that I want to live in. I'm going to create it in a place that's beautiful and amazing, and um, so it was very influenced by like Baz Luhrmann. I was like, I want it to feel like a Baz Luhrmann movie meets a Florence and the Machine song. Um, and so I thought it was like all pure imagination, but then, um, so there's a map in the book, and I got, I got to like, you know, have input in that, clearly, because I made the world, and the guy's like, okay, what does your world look like? Um, he was much nicer than that, though. But, um, <laughs> And so, as he was like, oh, so it's sort of, you know, it's a little like Amsterdam. And so, before writing the book, I hadn't traveled much, but um, two of the places I'd been had been the Netherlands and Belgium. And so, I visited Amsterdam and Bruges, and after, like, looking at the world, I was like, oh, it reflects these two places a lot, like, with the canals and, like, you know, the, like, storybook kind of looking houses. So even though I was, like, totally just thinking from my imagination, I think my imagination was also pulling from my experiences. 
Can I just say thank you for saying the Netherlands? Everyone calls it Holland and does my head in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dutch. Oh, okay. good. Yeah, yeah, no. That was like the only place I'd ever been. So. One, oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Just wondering if you can tell us what the symbol of Caraval means. <gasps> oh, I wish I could. Um, I wish I could. I've talked about it in book two, and sometimes it changes. So since we're still working on book two, and my first draft, it meant one thing, and now that it's another draft, it means something else. So there's definite meanings behind it, but I don't think I could say what it is until that book is like printed and done, and I'm not like saying something that becomes untrue when I revise again. Um, sorry. I know I'm like awful with the answers. <laughs> well, I think we'll, we're safe to go to signing now. It'll be fab. Um, if you do have any extra questions, you, of course, you can ask Stephanie when you get to the table. Um, one thing that I will ask, just as a last thing, it's probably you're not going to be able to. Is there a title for book two yet? No. No, that's an, I know. It's like, I, I th once I get back, um, book two is kind of set on hold a little bit. Well, I toured this whole month. So once I, I want to know, I have title ideas, so I'm like itching. I'm itching for one of them. So, but yeah, um, we don't have a title yet. But I, we've had discussions, but I'm thinking like March, all things will be figured out. Or maybe I'm just really optimistic because so I'm like okay I'm going home and I'm just gonna write and I'm gonna figure everything out so yeah there's no title but um I'm sure I will like shout it from the rooftops online as soon as there is a title because I'm like yay title and I really want to see a cover and all that stuff <laughs> well I know we're all, gonna, we're all gonna be incredibly excited for when it gets released so thank you so much for joining us tonight and thank you for managing to make it in the horrible weather <laughs> so um, if you give Stephanie and yourselves a huge round of applause